and good morning and welcome to UPN Focus. I'm your host Milt Thompson and in the last several weeks we've been bringing you all kinds of interesting information about organizations in our community that are either of service to people or deliver products and or opportunities for you to participate. Again, we're going back behind the scenes and we're going to talk about the ICVA, those initials standing for the Indianapolis Convention and Visitors Association. Did I have that right? I've got that right. We have to learn that. These are acronyms that are tossed around quite a bit. We're going to do that with an emerging new organization uh, called Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. We're going to talk about those organizations with our very, very special guest. We've got the former mayor of City of Indianapolis, John Krause, who is also the vice chairman of TTI, Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. John, welcome to our show. You made my Pepsi cost a dollar. I was, uh, <laughs> I was the deputy mayor. Oh, deputy only, mayor? Fi only 55 cents. Oh, oh my goodness. The I former the title deputy yeah. mayor and Mr. The, mayor. The, 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 the I was always told you've got to give the highest yeah. respect and deference level. Yeah, my other good friend, Matt Carter, who is vice president of the ICVA. Matt, welcome to Focus. Good to be here. The ICVA, a lot of people think about convention and, and, and visitors associations and bureaus and that sort of thing. The first thing they think about is a, a facility. They think about a stadium that's downtown. They think of the, what's attached to it uh, when they get there and that that's all that means. Uh, I know and I'm sure many of our uh, really astute uh, audience members know that there's much more to it than that. Tell us about the ICVA, its uh, structural organization and what it does. Yeah. The, the Convention of Visitors Association really is a catalyst for economic development. There are other organizations within a community that perform similar services in different realms. The Convention of Visitors Association is really trying to increase and expand and grow the economic viability of a community through a particular sector. In this particular case, it's the tourism industry. Uh, we, we refer to it as heads and beds. Um, if you take a look at a hotel room and the economic benefit that can be derived from having somebody come from another place, spending that time and their money in your community, and then the, uh, the ripple effect of how that flows through a community and the creation of jobs, through the improvement of the quality of life, and through the sharing of the cost of resources that a community benefits from for its residents, that is in fact the primary role of what that tourism industry is, is about. The Indianapolis Convention of Visitors Association has been around for 78 years and our responsibility is to market the destination, the greater Indianapolis area, as a place where people can come and spend their leisure, corporate or business or convention dollars and as a place uh, that they can have whatever experience they're looking for occur uh, and hopefully increase uh, the, the viability of our community in the process. And the awareness of Indianapolis in terms of its uh, outreach and growth and delivering um, uh, people to hotels and to our restaurants and towns uh, a, a, as a destination site. A lot of people around the country would not have thought about Indianapolis as a destination spot, uh, but for, I think, significant visionary leadership uh, of our uh, community leaders. Uh, uh, tell us about a little bit of that transformation from Mindy No Place to now Wow. I think there are two things, and John can certainly give historical perspective. I'd give first the perspective of the Convention of Visitors Association, is that we look to try and be a catalyst, and, and one of the things we try to do is to create an image of the city and then to be a catalyst for those decision makers in terms of how they uh, will spend their money and to help make Indianapolis one of the choices that they have available to them. And there are two things that I point out. One is on the leisure side, and most people don't think of Indianapolis as a leisure destination, but with the change in demographics internationally and the, and the move to more dual income, we have seen a real shift in the number of types of leisure trips people take. Instead of the long two and three week vacations that used to be held, you're seeing shorter duration trips and more frequent duration trips where they need weekend getaways because both couples are working, they may have family, they need those little respites where they can get their batteries re-energized. Well, they're not looking to take those long destination trips. They're looking to take more frequent, shorter duration. And that puts us in the marketplace for those three, four night stays. Uh, and, and that gives us, a, because of their frequency, an opportunity to compete more directly with the, what most people consider the first tier destinations in terms of leisure. Uh, on the convention side, one of, the, one of the clear advantages we have is central location, ease of access, and affordability. And, uh, and we have a very compact downtown area that lends itself very well well to the educational aspect of many of the meetings that come here. So th those two areas alone, we, we are trying to influence a change in, in the expectations and, and, and uh, the branding and the awareness of the decision maker about how our city, uh, what it actually has and what they, what they could experience. And John, you do have some historical perspective, uh, um, a former deputy mayor under former mayor Hudnut, right. uh, and spent a lot of time as our 
city was in its transformation, primarily the downtown area, uh, and the role uh, of, of government vis-a-vis -vis the Convention and Visitors Association. And tell us a little bit about how all of that came about. You know, when the Pan Am Games were here, and everybody was involved in the Pan Ams, but that seems to be a long time ago, it was 87. But the National Geographic did a story uh, about Indianapolis. And the quote I like the best is a, a former resident of Indianapolis said, since she moved away, they moved in the city. And that really speaks a lot about Indianapolis. One of the things I think people in Indianapolis in uh, various leadership roles saw way back when is you had to tell people about our city. People had to come in and experience the city in order to get the word of mouth to go because once they were here, they were surprised. And uh, so ICVA and other organizations helped create the Indianapolis Project. And that was a, a PR, not uh, just all the positive news, but just what's going on in Indianapolis plus and minus. And I think the Indianapolis Project did a wonderful job, but we've evolved from then. Uh, and then ICVA is doing a great job for talking about Indianapolis and Marion County. One of the things that I think everybody has realized is that Indianapolis is just not Marion County anymore. Indianapolis is a region. It's just not just the seven uh, surrounding counties. It's probably even larger than that. People are going to, to go to Geist. They're going to uh, Johnson County. They're going to Hendricks County. They're going to Westfield. They're coming in here and they're enjoying the region. One of the things that we've been trying to, to uh, come to grips with is how can we get folks together to talk about the region, to explore opportunities, to try to overcome some of the, the issues that we are confronting as a community, and to network. And one of the things that uh, is evolved is an organization, kind of a think tank about the future of tourism for tomorrow. How can we think about the region as a destination place, a place in which uh, there's two types of investment that you want to encourage. One, by businesses, and that's going to create jobs, but two, by families, and that's going to create quality of life in, the, in this region. A lot of different initiatives. You're talking really about regionalism. You're talking a larger uh, geographical area where you, where you don't necessarily um, uh, uh, change uh, uh, your biorhythms bio by crossing you know, 96th yeah. Street or otherwise. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Magic was a former initiative. The Chamber has been involved, and obviously that from a business point of view. Philanthropic organizations have looked now more regionally with respect to how it is they develop uh, resources so that yeah. they can uh, divide and give uh, resources. Uh, the Convention and Visitors uh, Association has uh, been integrally involved. You mentioned the, the project as well as right. kind of a media outlet to that. Uh, government has had some sort of a component role in that. But why now are we looking at this differently if this has been so successful and has worked? I think it's just not that we're looking at it differently. It's evolved, and this is just a recognition of what has evolved and trying to take advantage of what has evolved. Because, as you said, nobody thinks about 96th Street or County Line Road. Uh, a gong doesn't go off when you uh, cross that uh, uh, artificial barrier. So let's take advantage of this, and let's try to bring the people of not only Hamilton County and Johnson County, but even uh, people up in Muncie uh, or uh, Bloomington and, and the like, because they all are thriving on the central Indiana economy. They want to live here. They're raising their families here. And we want to have them be able to have visitors come in, attract people, because I think once the people see this city, see this community, the capital city, uh, it sells itself, people are surprised, and then they, that word of mouth tells others. You are the Vice Chairman of Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. You are the Vice President and uh, Staff Liaison, if you will, from the ICVA to an wholly, wholly owned subsidiary of the ICVA, Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. We're going to talk about that emerging organization right after these important words. Welcome back to UPN Focus. We've been talking about the Convention and Visitors Association here in Indianapolis, as well as a new emerging organization called Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. I'm doing that with our good friend John Krauss, who is the Vice Chairman of Tourism, Inc., and Matt Carter, Vice President of the ICVA, who also has been working with John uh, on the new organization. Uh, the genesis of Tourism Tomorrow is coming, as you say, an evolutionary process, John, from what and what it is it now. It was the Indianapolis Project, and uh, that was a, a public relations media outlet talking about the city. Uh, it's evolved into a think tank of trying to bring uh, people with ideas and find the resources and bring them together. 
There's a lot of good ideas that are happening. I think about what happens out here at the Speedway and what the uh, uh, Holman and the George family did. They had a wonderful asset here, and that was the 500, and, and it made people a lot of money, and people enjoyed it one day a year. Well, they decided they'd dream a little bit, and they thought about NASCAR, and they thought about Formula One. There are other people dreaming about things, but they may not know about the other dreams that are going on. What Tourism for Tomorrow is trying to do is to put those folks together. Whether you will ever know what Tourism Tomorrow is, is all about and what it does is not very significant. But the end result of what happens and the collaboration that happens is what we want to achieve. Give me give, give example. The Pharmaceutical uh, Association, uh, a large trade group, was here uh, a couple weeks ago. And there were 7,000 scientists and people uh, in, uh, related to the pharmaceutical industry. And Lilly is a big player there. These people were walking all around our city. Now, a lot of them were going to the meetings and other things, but nobody was bringing in together all those organizations that probably should take advantage of this interest, talent, and uh, uh, the potential about Indianapolis, bring them together to talk about it whether you want to talk about economic development, whether you want to talk about tourism, you want to talk about new research spinoffs, you want to talk about venture capital, or just Indianapolis is a great place maybe in which to come visit or have another convention. These are these opportunities which we think uh, Indianapolis has been really lucky uh, by luck and crock to take advantage of over the years. Can we take them up to the next level and take advantage of them in a better way. A lot of this is vision stuff. This is uh, talking about what's out there a little further. We've, we've had experience in our community with the, uh, the old city uh, committee and, right. and corporate community kind of councils and organizations that have uh, brought together uh, what we consider our most creative minds. Um, um, and some would consider that, however, the good old boys and, and not really brought in what is now becoming a much more diverse community. We talked a little bit about that off uh, uh, camera, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about wh what TTI is going to do to hopefully capture uh, more creativity and perhaps from other emerging kinds of leaders. I think uh, back to what John was saying earlier is I think it's key for us to focus on the customer in this particular case. And the customer in this case is a visitor who quite frankly doesn't see those boundaries as John mentioned. They look for the experience and the resident who finds the community, not just the, the county they live in, but the destination, the whole area that they, they call home. And so in, in looking at them as our customers, what we wanted to do was say there are finite resources with, available to us within the community. And one of the things that will be incumbent upon us as a society in this particular area is to do a better job in the future of forecasting and predicting what it is that a community will want and it, what it is a visitor will want and putting them out far enough in front of the organization that they have a reasonable chance to be fully understood by the entire community so that they can understand the risks and the rewards of acting in a particular way on a particular opportunity. And so what we're really looking at is the think tank is saying, let's involve the right people, let's assemble the right people. It's not about a board of director, it's not about an organization, it's about a collaboration and being a catalyst for the beginning of a dialogue with the leaders of today and the emerging leaders that will be here tomorrow to begin to understand what the opportunities that we have before us and the appropriate actions and the consequences of acting in a particular way will be in the future for this community. Because we do have those finite resources and we, it is incumbent upon us as stewards of our community and leaders to, and use, leadership, them to use them as efficiently as we possibly can. Well, as Matt mentioned, he talks about uh, new leaders. People aren't coming into the downtown to work as they used to. It's not the center of all commerce because there's people out around 465 or even farther. We've got to identify who those folks are. We've got to also take advantage of the uh, rich ethnic uh, emerging population that we have and see how we can bring new leaders in to talk about opportunities. Because uh, when you talk about the mover shakers, well, a lot of the mover shake shakers have shook and moved, and uh, they're they're off the scene, and uh, companies are being bought out. There's leadership that's in other places. Uh, really, you got to talk about investments, and you're investing your money and you're investing your time. And competition is really very very stiff. And if we don't take advantage of, of a, a knock at the door, it doesn't mean that we can open it someday. It means it goes somewhere else and we've got, it, we've got to be able to be aggressive and be proactive, and that's what we're trying to think about here. We've had as a community a lot of success, I think, in um, 
private-public partnerships, relationships. TTI, as you're suggesting, is much more of a convening or collaborating uh, delivery device, if you will, um, um, but not necessarily uh, ultimately where the rubber is meeting the road. Uh, you have a lot of organizations that you're hoping to kind of uh, mend together uh, into a, a nice tapestry. Um, uh, what, w w where are we in the process of this organization, TTI? Are we, uh, has it begun? It's uh, fully incorporated? Does it have its board of directors? Is it in a yeah. strategic planning process? What's all, where are we with directors that? Directors and uh, one of our all-time civic leaders, Jim Morris, uh, is the chairman of the TTI board. And right now we're in the process of trying to identify folks that we should bring around the table. Uh, this is a relay race, and uh, the baton gets handed off to different players at different times uh, to uh, bring them around the table. So it's going to be something that's going to evolve. It's not just limited to Central Indiana. You could be t having collaborations with Fort Wayne or Louisville or anywhere else that makes sense because uh, there are people that you want to get into the Midwest, and what we've got to look to is not just who wins geographically, but who wins collectively? And that's the difference that I think uh, we've got to kind of instill in folks. You keep hearing when you are um, someplace other than here in Indianapolis, sports, amateur sports, that's kind of what it is, is their identification. And that's how they've galvanized their community. That's how they now have all yeah. these kinds of facilities. Um, um, is, is, is there a lot more, or are we trying to vision uh, how to replicate that's, that in other areas? Or what, 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 where, where are we with that? That's one crown, in the, uh, one jewel in the crown. But, and I think we cannot just say it's the single jewel in the crown. There's other things we're going to have to emphasize. I mean, look, when the Sports Corporation was formed, we were unique. Now there may be 20 or 25 other organizations that if we don't uh, look out, they're going to eat our lunch. And so the same thing we've got to think about, not in biomedical or in uh, arts tourism or the environment or greenways. There's other things that we should take advantage of, and this is going to try to do that. I think along those same lines is that, that if you take a look at, at an organization, we, we compete, clearly we compete with other destinations, but I think that if you look at a legacy at the end of a lifetime that is lived, you take a look at what is your legacy to society been. And I think that where tourism tomorrow is really trying to step out and say is Indianapolis wants to be a humble leader in terms of saying yes we are concerned about the focus of our community and how we will evolve. But we also want to collaborate and work with other like institutions and other like destinations and either other unlike destinations to have a better understanding of what it is that we can provide collectively and singly within society and within our areas that will in fact uh, leave this place that we each come through for a period of time a better place at the end of that. And so Tourism Tomorrow has said that we will not just focus on Indianapolis, although that is our primary starting ground, and certainly it's in the benefits of Indianapolis that we do that, but we will not limit ourselves. And when there are collaborative opportunities with other destinations and cities, and not just in the tourism realm, we are Tourism Tomorrow. So by our name, we are saying we are, as an institution, focusing on the tourism quality of life issues. There are other alphabet organizations that are focused on other aspects of a community's development of, a, an, an, of the psychological area of a community. We're getting a good sense, I think, of our identification, but I know that there is more competition out there and other cities perhaps are doing the same. We'll want to talk about that when we get right back after these special words. Welcome back to UPN Focus. We've been having a fascinating conversation about Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. with John Krause and Matt Carter. Uh, we kind of found, uh, uh, found our identification as a new organization and trying to weave together uh, creative thinking minds and, and looking for some ultimate product delivery that collaborates um, this uh, region um, competitively. That means that if we are doing it, somebody else must be doing it, and if we don't do it right, we're going to, like you say, have our lunch eaten. Where are we vis-a-vis -vis the uh, relative competitive type cities like our own? I think you'd find that in terms of Indianapolis really has an overachieving complex. Uh, I, I think that UNIGOV was partially responsible for a number of wonderful things in our community. 
one of those being a higher expectation. If you take a look at it in the SMSA, the statistical metropolitan area, that we are, I believe, the 32nd largest area, but we are attributed because of Unigov as the 12th largest city, that we are a 32nd sized city with 12th place aspirations. And so in many cases, we have overachieved our comp our competition set by the wonderful resources that we've developed. Um, one of the things that w will be we are beginning to see emulated is that other cities are looking at our destination and saying, how are they able to bring this public and private partnership together? How are they able to have had the success above uh, w what perhaps they might be entitled to by the size of their city, and how are they accomplishing it? Certainly, a uh, Lilly Endowment and, and the corporate philanthropy that we have had in this community has been a big part of that. But one of the things that we have to be mindful of is picking the right places to put our investment so that it has the biggest return. And a part of that is understanding where the competition is putting their investment and how that will uh, impact us in the future. And I think that's one of the reasons we're... One of the ingredients which I think n nobody else has and doesn't use to the extent that we do is volunteers and its people. And a lot of people, that they'll either go for the Scarborough Priest games or the Pan Am games or anything. People like to be treated well, and our folks that live here treat everybody very, very well. And if you get one comment on critiques as they leave, they said, my God, you know, I was treated like a guest in Indianapolis. And how many other places have you gone to, and I won't mention their, their names, in which you kind of like, my God, you know, I've just, I've survived my stay here and I want to go home. Barely got out. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've uh, 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 have been nervous a lot of times about our natural resources because we don't have very many. So sometimes people get confused because of our investment in bricks and mortar that that really becomes the only thing we have. And you just hit upon it. We've got a heart and a soul, and that's what we call our home in Indianapolis. And we've got a lot of opportunities for you to visit some of these activities on our community calendar. And here are some more events in our area for you to focus on. Would you like to improve your child's writing and speaking ability? Short Ridge Middle School is offering a telecommunications magnet program. Your child can audition for a course study that features visits and lectures from local media celebrities. Did you know Americans waste 27% of their food? That's 365 pounds for every man, woman, and child. You can be part of a food rescue. Second Helpings needs you to help them rescue, prepare, and deliver hot meals to over 30 needy nonprofit agencies in central Indiana. Second Helpings rescues food from restaurants, groceries, caterers, and other food purveyors. In addition to helping feed the hungry, Second Helpings also safely uses food as a tool to train adults in preparation for a career in the food service industry. Help Second Helpings help hungry Hoosiers. We want to hear from you. Send your event information three weeks in advance to be part of the UPN 23 community calendar. And as you take advantage of those opportunities, I want to take advantage of the opportunity to thank John Kraus and Matt Carter for talking about the ICVA and the new organization Tourism Tomorrow, Inc. There will be an opportunities for everyone out there in our audience to participate at some level with their thoughts and creative activities. You come right back here this time next week for UPN Focus. <laughs>